Hello friends, this video on application of derivatives part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 23. Let's learn absolute maxima and minima. As I told earlier, absolute maxima and minima is defined in the closed interval where we know what is our domain. And in this case, the critical points are one is my endpoints. These things I discussed earlier, I'll discuss once again. Then the turning points. And then non differentiable points. non-differentiable so I'll take an example for example you have this uh, kind of function right so in this case my maxima and minima are the turning point if you see this guy this guy this guy so <coughs> we'll talk about a turning point they are scenarios where the function is like this monotonic function where we don't have turning points, there the maxima and minima are endpoints. These endpoints in this case, turning point in this case, they are functions which are non differentiable. For example, this function. So, here if you see this function is non differentiable at this point. So, you can have maxima and minima at this point also. Correct. So, absolute maxima and minima can have at three points. So we will we'll define a rule or steps how to find absolute maximum minima where we will find end points, turning points or non differentiable points and then we will try to find the exact value of absolute maxima. So in this case the absolute maxima is this guy actually not this guy. So what we do is we find all the points all the critical points actually these are all critical points. For graph all critical for example I will tell you my graph is something like this let's suppose uh, let's start from here okay this guy this guy something like this I have a minima also then I have a non differentiable point also and then I have a maxima some somewhere it stops here so the points we should cover here are these points also extreme points non differentiable points all the local maximum minimum that is all the turning points these are non-different points and this let's suppose this is also non-different point let's suppose so we'll consider all these points all these points we'll consider and then we'll find the actual value of all these points and then whatever is the maximum is the absolute maximum because that is 100% sure maximum in that particular domain. so that's how we'll do it we'll take some examples but just understand that here also the, the critical points are end points, turning points and non differential point. The only extra addition is the end point because now we know which is the starting point and which is the end point because it's a closed interval. So there is a theorem on this. It says that if my function is a continuous function on this closed interval on this closed, I'll write to be specific, closed interval, then f will have an absolute maxima if it attains, I mean at least once it will have absolute minimum and absolute maximum. So this if is a closed interval, it will have at least once minimum and maximum. So if f is a differentiable function on the closed interval and c be any point on this, then f dash c is equal to 0. If it attains a local maximum, and f dash c is also 0 if it attains the local minima. So, if it is a differentiable function, if you differentiate this guy, then that point is either maxima or minima or sometimes point of inflection also. There is a rule to find maxima and minima as I explained. We first find all the critical points. So, critical points are nothing but f dash x is equal to 0, f is non differentiable or endpoints. Right, and take endpoints also. So those critical points I am saying is critical points. I include everything. 
that's the way I look into it. Critical points includes f dash x equals 0, the point where it is non differentiable, and the end point. So I have all the points. Now, at all these points, I calculate the value of f. That is fc1, fc2, all the values are calculated. Correct? Now with this, I'll identify what is the maximum, what is the minimum value. And the greatest value is the absolute maximum and the least value is the absolute minimum. See graphically, but I'll, I, I'll explain you what is this. My graph is like this. It's, it starts from here, let's suppose, right? There's a curve like this here. There's a curve like this here. This is a non-differentiable function here non different point and there's a maxima also. So what I do is I take all the points starting from this, this point with the turning points, turning points I'll take, this is a turning point, this is a non differential point, non drill point, the end point. I'll take all these points, at all these points I'll find the value. And then by observation I can find that this guy, if you see, is the minima and this guy is the maxima. So that is the approach. The crude approach because it's a closed interval I know all the points I can get all the points in the earlier case we were talking about local maxima and minima the interval was not closed but here the interval is closed because it starts from here and ends from here so I can I have the luxury of finding the value of all the points and also the function value at these points correct so we'll do that and find the maxima and, and that guy is the absolute maxima and minima. We'll take some examples. We have to find the absolute maxima and minima for this function at this interval. So please don't, whenever we talk about absolute maxima and minima, the interval has to be defined. It has to be a closed interval. So my f x is equal to x cube. So as I told, my points will be what first thing is turning point right here and then it will be uh, non differentiable points and end points correct so let's talk about turning point for turning point my f dash x has to be 0 or f dash x is nothing but 3x square has to be 0 or x is equal to 0 this is my first value I get from turning point non differentiable since it is a continuous function it is differentiable so I don't have any non-differentiable point. Then I'll take endpoints. Endpoints x is equal to what? Minus 2n2. So my total points, my critical points I can say is my critical points are nothing but minus 2, 0, and 2. Why? x is equal to minus 2, 0, and 2. I merged all this because I got I need to get turning points, non differential points, and end points. Turning point was 0, non differential point, it doesn't exist, and end points what? Minus 2 and 0. Now I have to find f of all these points. So f of minus 2, if you see the first point, if you take, is nothing but minus 2 q, that is minus q. Then second point, you take f of 0. f of 0 is 0 q, that is 0. Third is f of 2. f of 2 is nothing but 2 q that is 8. So if you see here, this guy is the minimum value and this guy is the maximum value. Just by observation. Thus I can say that this is the absolute maxima and this is the absolute minimum. Correct? Got the approach? You have to first find the critical points. When you have, once you have the critical points, you have to find the value of f at all these points and then by observation we can find the maxima and minimum. Let's take one more example. Find the maximum profit a company can make if the profit is of this function. Here also, since the profit is given, but a cash here is this. Is this an absolute maximum in a question? No, it is not. Why? Because it is an open interval question. The interval is not closed. If you see, just by looking at the question, you can say the interval is not closed. So it's an open interval question. So here we are not talking about absolute maximum number. Here you are talking about local maximum number. Why? Because it is an open interval. The 
I intentionally took this because I wanted to clear this doubt here because this is a local maximum equation. This is not an absolute maximum equation. Here I have to find the maximum linear property. So for local maximum linear minimum equation, we can't have the end point because there is no end point. The only point we can consider is turning point and non-differentiable. But if you see this guy is a continuous function, so non-differentiable is not in picture. So we have we can consider only the turning point that is p dash x is equal to zero can be the only points considered. Let's find p dash x. Forty one becomes zero. Twenty four x becomes minus twenty four x becomes minus twenty four, and eighteen x square becomes eighteen into two x, and this is equal to zero. If we solve this, my x is nothing but minus twenty four by thirty six. That is minus two x. Now I have to find whether at this guy it is maxima or minima or inflection point right because i know that x is equal to minus 3 is a critical point it can be a maximum value it can be a minimum value but we don't know actually it is a maximum or minimum so what we do we can use secondary derivative test so let's find double dash x this guy is nothing but my p dash x came out to be minus 24 minus 36x so my p double dash x will be zero minus thirty six, and my p double dash of two by three is minus thirty six, and this guy is less than zero. So I can say that minus two by three is point of maximum. Correct. But the question is the question asking the point of maxima? No, the question is asking the maximum profit. The maximum profit will be nothing but p of minus two by three, and that is nothing but forty one minus twenty four x. That is twenty four into minus two by three, minus eighteen into x square. That is minus two by three square. And if we solve this, we'll get forty nine as the answer. And that is the maximum profit the company can make. Correct. Very simple. Here also we found the critical points. The critical point was minus two by three, but we were not aware with whether the critical point is for maxima, minima, or for, or for point of inflection. We found p double dash x, and we found that value is negative. That means p minus two by three, two minus two by three is maxima. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. 